afternoon all. Uh, we are sorry for the uh, technical issues we had with the, yesterday's game, which was an exciting um, game. Um, and we'll, I think, uh, Chris, we're going to try and do that at some point in the future again, that game seven. Yeah, it was uh, somewhat unlucky here. It's, um, it's a bit uh, weird set up here because I'm on a notebook and uh, also um, not with a steady internet mm. connection. It's just a mobile phone connection. So mm. this seemed to uh, really worsen the audio a lot. But uh, we invested some time here trying to, to make it better for this video. Yes. Game 7, uh, I think we should do again at uh, at another time. It was an interesting game strategically, so it, it's a bit... It's a bit, a uh, bit of a shame that uh, the audio really, um, yeah, is so problematic on this game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's get going with the um, mate. It was uh, an exciting game. I think this match finally has got, yeah, <laughs> yes. has got off the ground. So Anand playing white against Gelfen. He plays d4, and then we see knight f6. Nothing unusual so far. Uh, well, knight f6, instead of the Slav, uh, we see uh, a tendency to want maybe the groom field now after c4, g6. Um, yeah, it's it's, it's kind of interesting, I think, because um, yeah, Gelfand's match strategy seems to be to, um, to um, press um, on a very, very, very solid basis with white. Those kind of Slavs, this e3 and this little things, which really uh, led to win last game. Mm. And with black, he really plays dynamic openings. He plays your Greenfeld, he played the Sveshnikov, and the kind of sharp stuff, um, in contrast to what he um, often also plays, stuff like the Petrov, or he plays the Slav as well. But uh, in this match, he went for Greenfeld and other dynamic openings. And um, mm. yeah, Hanan sticks with uh, to, to F3 here, yeah, which the move he already played in uh, game three, I guess. Yeah, actually, I, I remember, as well as you mentioned it in the previous video, and, and it being played before, I think Shirov has a, a YouTube video where he was afraid of Kramnik playing this and not wanting to transpose into a King's Engine defense. I, I think, mm -hmm. anyway, there's, it's interesting that this has been used in the past, this F3, as well, uh, quite a lot, uh, sometimes, uh, avoiding the Grunfeld main line. But now we see C5. Black counter-attacking on the dark squares. Yeah, interestingly enough, um, Gelfand doesn't want to go into this d5 setup again, which he had in game three. He had some problems in game three. Arnold was, I guess, close to uh, getting something really um, significant in this game. He had an extra pawn, but somehow couldn't yeah, find the way to, to make it count. And uh, now instead of d5, we see c5, which transposes to kind of a Benoni setup, but with the slight twist that we will see, um, yeah, shortly. So white goes d5. Yep. D5, and so it it looks as though, um, well, so a kind of okay, Simish King's engine where um, black, um, you know, in theory can accelerate the dark squares, um, but. Um, it, it's it's uh, tricky. Uh, in fact, in, in this position, uh, I think this is a, a very interesting move, knight e2 already. Um, so the knight can, can come, this knight can come to uh, uh, c3, uh, potentially. That That's quite an interesting move, knight. I don't know if it's theory. <laughs> Probably it's theory. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's really um, kind of an un, uncommon position here already. Um, but it, it makes a lot of sense, of course, because the, the knight on g1 is White's uh, problem piece in all those f3 setups. Mm. And um, as usual, usually you get uh, setups with uh, knight b to c3, and um, yeah, it, it's difficult to, to get this knight developed. And what he's doing now after castles, we, I think we can put it on the board. Oh, black castles now. Actually, there's just one thing I want to say that I think, I yeah. think so, I've had a game as White where. I've waited for knight d7 and sneaked in knight h3 to f2, which which was which turned yeah. out okay. But that doesn't have to happen. Black doesn't have to play knight d7 and allow this maneuver. But no, knight d7 would be quite an inaccurate move, I guess. Mm. To to allow knight h3, black really shouldn't allow this move mm. because this is really the problem. Why it's um this this pawn chain g2 to d5 is very 
very pleasing to the eye. It's very stable, mm. but it really a little, a little bit clobbers up this king side development. Yeah. So um, there's uh, the famous saying that the same is just a good opening, but ask the knight on G1 what he thinks about it. <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't know that, famous. You just made that up. Really? No, 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 no. This is, this is a famous uh, <laughs> saying. <laughs> it's a famous saying in your chess club. <laughs> no, 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 okay. no, 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 no. I mean, I cannot really put it to some, it, some, some famous player said that. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Maybe Nidorf or whatever. Some, some great player from the past. He who was a bit critical about the Samish variation. <laughs> okay, so knight e2, um, castles, and now knight e2, c3. And this is really a point where this um, somewhat uh, original move order with uh, f3 early, um, yeah, is maybe beneficial to white, as he um, easily can uh, put this knight on a good square. This b1 knight, of course, looks a bit redundant at the moment, but it can go to d3, d2 later, or maybe a3 at some point <laughs> yes yeah, makes sense sort of a mirror image of a french tarash where the knights are dancing around on the king side uh. yeah <laughs> it, uh, it, it makes a lot of sense the only issue here it could be that white has got lots of pieces on the queen side mm. and um he doesn't have much on the king so mm. but uh, this makes a lot of sense to make use of this so i'm a bit surprised that um Gerhard also initiated the c5 setup also so early on move 3. Mm. He could have um, also played bishop g7, castles d6 before, and see if white would go the same way again, like in this game. And maybe then black has some other setup. I'm not sure. In fact, I assume that e6, e d is a bit risky here, because if you give white c4, then knight a3 to c4, or knight d, this would be very useful maybe uh, for this knight. Yeah. Could be, could be. Mm. Um, maybe e6. Um, it's just, uh, he doesn't uh, didn't want to play because of um, of this implication. But it's uh, difficult to generate any play without e6. Yeah. If you just uh, hang around with black, you you're just in a bad Benoni. And I mean, the Benoni per se, the structure is is bad for black. You need to get some activity going. Otherwise, you're just worse. I know. You usually and, beat uh, me. In, you crush me in blitz usually with this structure. Uh, sometimes taking on e5 is <laughs> horrible, yeah. <laughs> so so here, actually, black now plays knight h5, which looks as though it's got an aggress aggressive intention of f5 um, at some point. But... Um, um, I, I'm, I'm honest with you, I don't understand the move. I have no idea what it's doing. <laughs> well, technically, it does make way for the f4, doesn't it? <laughs> It's technically, yeah. F, F4, F5, it looks a bit thematic. If you get a good grip on the dark squares, that would be good, wouldn't it? If you can get a nice knight on E5 with a pawn on F4. <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe maybe he wants to really play F5. And I'm, I'm not sure. Or he wants to um, maybe play, I'm not sure. F, F, F5 looks terribly committal. But, okay, it's it's an idea maybe to, to open up the position while white has made lots of pawn moves and lots of knight moves. Mm. <laughs> white is not very well developed, if you see, but um, basically almost all his pieces are still on the first rank. Mm. So maybe he tries to um, open up the position quickly. Mm. But, um, well, white could have uh, gone g4 here, for instance, and you just need to drop back then. But it, it would have been an idea. Um, but it's, of course, also very committal from White's point of view, as you now need to yeah, go queenside with the king or yeah. leave it in the center for some way. It, it would would have been playable, I guess, yeah. but uh, maybe not the kind of move that uh, Arnold was up to. I think his bishop g5 was uh, was fine as well. Well, actually, when really, I'm uh, playing white against Simon Shaw, I used to play, I used to enjoy the white side. I like having a knight here, so when you play g5, this knight can't go there. So I guess g5 has less venom here, if maybe knight h5 is possible again. Yeah, I think this g, this kind of g4 here would be more um, to, to gain space than to really um, uh, try to attack the king. Yeah, It's very debatable if it's a good move. I just, was just men mentioning it, yeah. because it was also um, mentioned in the press conference, but Anna didn't really... Mm. Um, answer the question if he seriously considered this move. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow he um, 
danced around the answer and didn't say anything. Okay. So, but bishop g5 uh, makes lots of sense, developing this piece, mm. preventing e6. Yeah. And uh, sort of asking this black, uh, well, what, what are you doing next here in this position? And um, he, came up, he came up with a really, a really interesting move, bishop f6. Yes, um, usually a king's engine player doesn't want to give up their dark square bishop that easily because you are weakening more your squares around the king. Yeah, and just one thing which I uh, which immediately popped into my head when I was watching the game. Um, um, if you don't, um, it, it's useful to know that um, Gelfand, while he played in recent years, he played the Slav and other openings. He's originally a king's Indian and Benoni player in his youth. Mm. So, it's uh, it's not like um, he's never had this kind of positions before, yeah. and also um, he's got um, his former trainer um, in his times when he uh, was still when he was not uh, living in Israel yet. His former trainer is um, this is um, Albert Carpengut, so name. Uh, he's a famous expert on the Hamish and also this Benoni kind of structures, and they even wrote a book together um, like. 15 to 20 years ago oh. about uh, this kind of um, setup. So it's not like uh, he plays this. He's, he's playing this for the first time in his life or so. Yeah. So he should have some idea what he's doing in these positions. Yeah. But Bishop F6 is really a surprising move. But I think it was interesting because yeah. White is um, inclined to take here. Yeah. I would have really. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's weakening. The the dark squares are being celebrated a bit more with the absence of this bishop. Yeah, and it's, uh, it gives you two F-pawns to uh, break up the center. Yeah. Uh, but, but I was wondering, um, why, why can, what, what's wrong with White uh, just going to E3 here? Just going back to E3? Yeah, this would, would be the first move that would pop into my head. Maybe um, it's silly, but uh, sort of asking Black, what are you doing with your knight on, on H5 and your bishop on F6? I'm just uh, developing my pieces, what are you doing? I'm not sure. It's a very, very weird position. Um, yeah. I'm not sure what Black is doing, really. Not not saying that it is bad necessarily. I'm just not understanding the kind of uh, play uh, Black is going for. You're right. Know? If there's no commitment for F5 here, without F5, I don't see... Say he goes back, he's just lost the tempo then, hasn't he? Uh, he's given yeah. White a free move now for Queen D2, say. If if yeah, he wants to say free two or ninety two or whatever yeah. move, it would just be a free and, move. Uh, this, this, yeah, this cannot be the idea really to 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 draw back, and um, mm. I, I would have considered, but but unfortunately, no one asked them in the press conference um, about this move. Maybe on bishop b three, black just goes e six and continues. It's possible. Right. Yeah. And. Uh, it, these pieces on f6 and h5 are somewhat weird, but it's not like you immediately have an idea how to how to use this. Maybe a token check is not so bad to force g3, and then later f5 might have more impact. So force g. I, uh, I don't know. Maybe 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 this is completely absurd, but <laughs> maybe black could. Uh, yeah, I think I think of um, yeah, it's white's move. Oh. But black could could maybe go e5 instead of e6, just uh, just a completely different idea, with the idea of uh, of playing bishop g5. But then queen d2 right would uh, prevent this. If black would get in bishop g5. Ah, but now this is useful for knight g7. This is check Benoni territory, and then you can go like this. Yeah. You can go. You could try this. Yeah. But I think white would be very very comfortable with this position. But at least it made a bit so, of logical sense to facilitate knight g7. Um, yeah, I'm trying to make a bit of sense to this. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe it would have played e6, we never know. Yeah. But, um, okay, um, I wish he took on f6, which makes sense as well, of course. Mm. It's not uh, not like it's uh, totally surprising. And then uh, queen d2, um, so taking um, he took, away this f4. So square. he took the pawn, it gives him potential pressure and a hammering point on e4. Now, if he takes yeah. to the knight, that just looks passive, right? Doesn't it? It looks. Yeah, it looks this is. Yeah, this looks like uh, White will have a lot of fun this uh, this afternoon. Yeah. Okay, so it's at least like, it's just a one-way street position. So it's dynamic compensation, which uh, a lot of GMs they routinely accept double pawns sometimes to get the dynamic compensation and and pressure. 
Um, so Very often, this kind of structures where you, these double pawns, which are part of, let's say, I'm not sure, quite sure how to phrase it, that are not isolated. Like um, if you have a double pawn, let's say, on the C file, and you have, mm. don't have a B pawn and you don't have a D pawn. Mm. They're completely isolated. These are almost always weak, mm. but the double pawns being part of sort of a, yeah, let's say, pawn clump here on the, the queen on the king side. The pawn island. There's no weakness at all. Yeah, let's say a pawn island here. Yeah. Um, um, this is no weakness at all, and usually, very often, it's even adva an advantage to have it because you have a half-open file. Yes. So um, it's um, there. There are even some some players who who claim that uh, often double pawns are really a big advantage to have because you have open files. Mm. So. Um, yeah, black immediately goes for the f5 counterplay. Oh, I and, like uh, to call it, I don't know if it was a silly term, but I did like to call them potentially losing trump cards, because here, okay, you've got this sort of trump card generated, but it's potentially losing because you've, you've paid the price in terms of structure. So, I, I, yeah, it's sort of give and take, isn't it? You're, you're getting this, but you, you're taking away a bit from your pawn structure as Fetis. But it, if it's not significantly exploitable, then it's no big deal, the double pawns, and... But yeah, but this is a big question now about White simply just taking here on f5, uh, which he did. I don't know what other options though. What do you think about this? E takes f5 was played here. Yeah, I think Black Black is maybe threatening f4. So maybe it was a uh, given. I, I also think I would have taken that quickly. Oh yeah, because Black might threaten f4 and then knight to e5. Yeah. So E takes f5. And now walking into uh, a token um, uh, fork, he knows that he can take on b1. So this g4, okay, but first he can play a check anyway. So g4 is played, knowing that bishop takes uh, b1. Um, uh, just a funny thing, I don't know if you saw the press conference after the game. No. They, they asked uh, Vishia, when did you see the final position appearing? in your head the first time that you see if you would play this way you would win the game mm. and he said when he played um, when he played e takes f5 he did see the final position blimey when he played that e this, takes f5 yeah yeah it, it's pretty much forced if you if you look at it in, in retrospect but um i know it's not forced because black blundered on the way but it's it's a plausible line to to calculate Oh yeah. So, okay, he play, he went g4. But hang yeah. on, that that has huge implications. He's factoring in his own weaknesses of the last move with the f3, and how black would take advantage of that later. Yeah, sure. So yeah. that's immense okay, that he's actually seen. Okay, what's coming? Okay, we'll, we won't spoil it for the. So there was a check thrown in, and now bishop takes b1 is virtually forced. There's no other way. Otherwise, the pieces are are forked here. Yeah. I think black needs to take, right? So rook takes b1, and now, okay, so there's the, the crossroads here. The knight could have gone here, or it could have gone there. Uh, so those are legal candidate moves. But what was chosen was queen f6. So should we see why, should we just briefly mention why knight f6 wasn't, engines like knight f6 or knight g7. Knight f6, I think, is the favorite. Yeah, I think, okay, the engine wants to play this way. Because um, the the other um, the line seen in the game just leads to um, yeah big trouble for black, and uh, I think yeah this uh, I think if if this is the main move that um, black must play then this whole this whole conception is just wrong because um, while white is not um, directly winning or anything in this position, he th I think he has got a very very nice stable advantage that he can try to press home. White has just um, got a nice space advantage with a pawn on d5 against d6 is typical mm. Benoni advantage, and uh, black doesn't have a dark squared bishop, yeah. which can harass white on the dark squares. So the dark squares are no problem here. Mm. And um, one one general issue here is that black's knights uh, won't get any good posts. Yeah. This kind of f3 g4 setup limits the f6 knight. Yeah. This piece doesn't do much. And um, what White uh, tries to do in the long run is to play even g5 and f4 to um, to really get a grip on the king side and completely limit the knights. He, he wants to do this in a in a position where Black cannot go um, knight h5, of course. 
Yeah. So this is uh, more of an end game plan. Ideally, you would uh, would uh, push all the king side pawns, but um, White would um, try to exchange the heavy pieces here. And this bishop is not so bad, you think? Uh, it can no, go no. to d3 later and support maybe a kingside attack or something. It's stopping this, all this, the breaks, isn't it? Like b5 is yeah, is going to be very this, hard. This bishop, yeah, this bishop often uh, in the long run gets very nice place on h3. H3. H, yeah, in a, in a, this 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 is where White wants to go f4 and g5. All oh, right. Put the bishop on g4 or h3 or something like this. Yeah. You would get this kind of uh, this kind of um, position. You very often get. Um, in uh, in a line of the King's Indian, the Averbach, Averbach line. I'm not sure how to pronounce it correctly in English. Mm. This kind of position you uh, would often get there, but the only difference being that there are still um, the bishops on the board. White would have a bishop on mm. on f4 and black one on g7, and this is also quite um, quite uh, nice for white. So it's not it's not terrible, uh, completely terrible for black, but it's sort of position. Where you don't have any counterplay and you will suffer for a long time. Yeah. So it's nothing he really um, would mm. uh, would want to have on the board. So he really, I think, we, we, he relied on Queen F6, and he also did uh, did um, when he played uh, Queen F6, he um, did calculate some pretty interesting variations. But in in, 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 real, in real life, playing a move like Queen F6 isn't that like going through a blind alleyway? Where you you know you haven't got many options along that alleyway. You've you've just turned off the main street, and you know that you're not going to have options for quite a while. And you've got to precisely calculate that line, haven't you? Otherwise, you you know it's really dangerous, isn't it, to go through a forcing sequence? Um, yeah. Okay. After this, is there's no nowhere back. No? <laughs> yeah. But, but I think um, he just he just um, didn't see this uh, the final move coming. And was thinking that he uh, that he had a good position really, and there are some lines which are um, very nice for black. Um, now white takes on h5, but let's let's quickly investigate an alternative which is also interesting. Let's say white would play bishop b2. Mm. Yeah. And then then knight f4. And knight e4. And this this could be could be quite interesting for white. Oh. But uh, yeah, let's uh, no. It's 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 not uh, it's not easy now. A move like queen e5, White could um, could think about uh, various uh, various options. He could um, think about a move like g5 with the idea of knight f6. Whatever, there are some ideas. But what Gerhard wanted to do, and he stated in the press conference, um, what he intended, he wanted to take on e4 here. And then knight d7 to e5. Oh, very nice blockade on the dark squares. Yeah, and maybe going g5 to uh, anchor this uh, this knight. This kind of lines. Beautiful positional it's sacrifice. Very, yeah, it's very nice. So he had some some good ideas, interesting ideas going. Yeah. But he simply miscalculated um, this kind of line. It um, it it just happens. <laughs> what oh. can you do? So. Basically, it was just taken, yes, just taken. So the alleyway continues going up this alleyway, whereas Queen is now ending up on h1. Okay. And here we assume he fought, uh, you were saying earlier to me, that Queen f4 was the assumption. Yeah, yeah. in the, in the press conference, um, both players said that they... Uh, only thought about queen f4, and then Anand, Anand said, "Okay, when he played e takes f5, he had this already uh, in his mind, and then he saw already queen f2. So when when Gelfand um, played this queen f6, he, I think he almost uh, instantly could play the moves because he saw that that he just wins here. And um, so Anand, Anand after, instantly playing moves. Anand, yeah. So but uh, but Gelfand also couldn't. There's no way back, as you already mentioned. Yeah. Once you're <laughs> In this, Once you're there, you cannot go back. It's like going a, a dark alleyway. So Queen F2. Now, why would they have initially fought? So Queen F2, and it seems the Queen, well, the Queen <laughs> is kind of trapped, unfortunately, in, in a literal uh, sort of analogous alleyway as well, not just from the forcing uh, line perspective, but also the Queen yeah. is literally trapped 
down this alleyway. Yeah, uh, white, white will move bishop h3 or d3 or whatever and just win the queen. And it's a piece up then. Okay, and he actually resigns here. But Engines fa finds a resource which is very interesting. Uh, a resource, I think, which saves Spassky once in, a, in an otherwise completely hopeless position. I think Spassky, playing the King's Engine, once played this spectacular type of move uh, when he was getting hacked on the King's side. Um, mm -hmm. I wonder if it's worth mentioning it, uh, if YouTubers can guess it, if we give them uh, 10 seconds. It's, it's not, it doesn't really save Black, but it would maybe let, let Black play a few more moves. Um, I wonder if you guys on YouTube can see it. Um, 10 seconds. Okay. An engine move to knight c6. <laughs> knight c6. <laughs> it's really funny, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure that they're both... I, I'm not sure. I cannot tell. But uh, it, it, it's easily possible that uh, that both players um, didn't really take this into account. Mm. Um, it, it, it really, as you said, it, it doesn't really um, save the day here. But it saves the queen. <laughs> yeah, for, because if bishop d3, now. there's check, and then there's another key check on on f3, uh, and then and then queen takes h2 is possible. So that's the ingeniousness of it. But of course, white t is best to take that knight um, and let the queen escape at some cost. But here, white is better. But to to engines, it's about a pawn. Uh, but it is it is actually in practice, and it, you know White's got that d5 control. Um, we we saw a fascinating line where Black sacrifices the exchange well to be a bishop down, but it's at that level being a bishop down for two pawns it's not very good. Um, yeah, it, it it also plays very nicely for White. You can you can um, do various things here. Knight d5 is a good idea, of course. Mm. You could also think about um, just. Uh, I'm just seeing this right now. Maybe it's also an idea. Play something like bishop uh, g2 to d5 and knight on e4. Mm. Could also be a, a worthwhile construction. Yeah. So white will get uh, get a huge attack most likely on on black's king, mm. while being materially um, very fine. But it's possible that they really both uh, didn't consider the move. Mm. And it, apparently, I think Gelfand was annoyed with himself too much, so he just resigned here. He didn't. Because he didn't see this move, he was annoyed. I think Queen F2. Yeah, certainly. So, what was this Queen F4? Why, why would both have considered Queen F4? Is it because it attacks D6 as well as maybe threatening um, to trap the Queen? It, it still guards key squares, but it does yeah. mean here Queen G1 is possible. Yeah, yeah, maybe first. Um, okay, you. Black needed to see this basically when he uh, when he went for um, even even before he went queen f6 really because um, what he he needed to uh, maybe um, going back to f5 or something because I think it, this knight f6 on move 14 which we looked at which leads to this really <laughs> prospectus position is something Black needs to avoid at all costs so. Mm. He pretty much, um, yeah, was down the drain <laughs> quite but, earlier. But here, here, Queen G1, it's not so terrible for Black because imagine, you know, he's got Queen D4s now. He escapes here with yeah. Queen D4. Yeah, this is uh, this is fine. Actually, or the check even, it's, it's just escaping. Yeah. Uh, okay, so so basically, unfortunately, yeah. So Queen F6 going through this alley and finding it's not very nice at the end of it. Uh, unbelievable! It's it's quite a shocker. I I heard about it by phone. I was a bit tied up earlier. I couldn't believe it after yesterday's game, and apparently it's a world record. You know, almost a world record decisive game for a world championship match. This one, not many no, games. Are, are so few moves, are they? No, I don't think so. There was a very quick uh, loss. Um, pretty famous game also. Um. But this wasn't a world championship match. It was it was ineffective. The world championship match. There has been a very quick loss by Karpov against Korchnoi in the 1974 match, 
which decided who would challenge Fischer. So in effect, it was the World Championship match, as Fischer didn't uh, didn't play. Mm. This in effect gave Kabov Kar the title. But Kabov mm. lost one game, also I think in in nineteen or eighteen moves or something. Oh, was that the night takes eight seven or something? Was yeah, that right. Night? Exactly this. Yeah. This <laughs> Sorry, my 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 memory is not so bad. <laughs> yeah, no, that was yeah, that was a classic. I, I, <laughs> so I I think I might have videoed that at some point. That that was really cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this was was the candidates uh, final at the time, so um, there have been quick uh, losses, uh, but uh, mm. yeah, this this was really uh, quick. But okay, it's not a matter of moves; it's just uh, it it was it it got got concrete um, to concrete calculation heavy position really early, and they were I think very early on their own. I think on move seven or eight, this is not home analysis anymore. They yeah. had to think on their own. But you know. And, um, isn't it hope for amateur players that they should compete against IMs and GMs with the idea that, you know, they're not playing against computers. One day, you know, one of these IMs or GMs, I know you're, you're going to be an IM, but for someone like me who's not, you know, I'm just CM, but, you know, I've only beaten ever two IMs, but, you, okay, A, you don't play them that much, but there is always the chance they will blunder, and this just demonstrates that they are just human. They're not anything like computers. Tactically, grandmasters are just people like us. You know, computers yeah. are much stronger tactically, aren't they? And they're just going to get stronger tactically um, as they see more uh, moves ahead yeah. each year. Yeah, <laughs> in, yeah in positions that are um, that are sharp, interesting, and not one-sided in a way. If you got into a one-sided position against a stronger player, mm. where you're just suffering with, I don't know, you don't have any space, you have a bad bishop, whatever, and you don't really have play on your own, then it's very likely that you will suffer against yeah. a better player and maybe lose. But if you play your own game and play active and uh, and uh, aggressive moves, yeah. then they will they will make mistakes, of course. Yeah, this is. Uh, and okay, if you see, if you say you you beaten only only in, in uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's um so many years, yeah. In in FIDE time control, of course, in Blitz, I've, you know, it's it's much easier. Blitz, it's, it's every it's, day. It's yeah. something else, yeah, of course. <laughs> but but in, uh, in it's, it's also a matter how many did you play? If you would play like five uh, FIDE tournaments a year with uh, nine games each, and you would play twenty IMs each year, I guarantee you that you will beat three or four of them. Mm, yeah. It's 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 yeah. It's it, it's just it just it will happen, it's, and uh, they're all human. You you if you check your games with computers, even better players or grandmasters, you will find lots of positions where you could have played better or more exact or mm, whatever, mm. which not uh, means that uh, the computer is. But but it just shows you you get chances. Well, you get those chances all the time. I, I must admit, in in the recent uh, four and CL weekend. It, in one of the games I video annotated to the loss, there was this line where I could have actually trapped my opponent's queen, and I even miscalculated that. But sometimes it's very, very important, uh, this idea of queen trapping. If, if the opponent's queen is in your territory, to make sure uh, you can trap it or not. I think that's a critical thing in analysis, because the queen's worth so much. It's worth making sure, 100%, if it's trapped or not. Um, and I, I, I think yeah, sure. this is it's an important theme for, you know, club games that this queen's entering the position. So can it be trapped or not? They they have to make hundred percent sure because it's so valuable. So yeah. Yeah. For instance, in in, the, in this position here, on queen f6, um, white needed to calculate, um, which for Anna is not difficult, but mm. he needed to calculate this line up to queen f2. Mm. See, okay, this queen is trapped, but you also need to do this if you don't do it. Black would easily maybe have the better position. Yeah, it's not like uh, not like you. Okay, okay, I played some other move and it's still a game or whatever. No, if if White doesn't go for this, he maybe is worse. Well, he's the exchange down here, isn't he? It, it, otherwise, it's two rooks, knight. It would be he'll be the exchange down. Yeah, yeah. unless White has yeah. this idea of mating, but. I, yeah. That's not too slow, isn't it? Um, yeah, Queen F2 wins, but it's the only move that uh, doesn't make your position worth, I guess. So Queen G1, let, let's assume White does try for that mate on G7. Yeah, you can just go Queen E3 here, and it's over. On Queen Queen F6, there's Queen E5, isn't there? Yeah, or, or you can take on H6 maybe. Oh, sorry, you yeah, need to, just take you, on H6. Yeah, but you need. Yeah, but you need to be cautious. The D6 is also falling. 
Yeah. And this is an important point. But black is, of course, fine here. You can be sure that white would mate you <laughs> yeah. immediately and you're, you're an exchange and two pawns up. So, yeah. That so you need to be... Do you need to be exact in your in your calculation if you take on on h five but, but you also need to do it because otherwise black would be uh, very fine it's it's amazing. I thought yesterday's game was too simple, but this is even more simple. It seems something a lot of club players would have fallen victim to getting their queen trapped, especially me i sometimes a bit adventurous in my queen <laughs> oh dear. yeah yeah but it, it's it's not all it's not all the time that that um, things uh, need to be hyper complicated. Mm. Um, I, I beat. If you, if I look, for instance, at at games where where I beat stronger players, mm. um, it's it's very often it looks very one sided. It's not like uh, super complicated or anything. They got into some some problematic setup and then one or two inexact moves and and it's over. It's not like you need to produce a masterpiece to to beat a strong player. It's mm. <laughs> it. Uh, it just happens uh, sometimes that the other one is just um, assessing something wrong or, or miscalculating something, even on even on this level. Yeah. It's, it's certainly a bit surprising after yesterday's game where you could maybe think that um, Arnand would be a little bit, I don't know, shaken up or irritated or whatever. But um, Yeah, I had actually okay. visualized uh, Gelfand choosing a very solid drawing strategy just to, just to draw his way to win the match, not take any risks because he's you know he's got his you know money in the bank now to win the match you know his points he just needed to just draw his way to win the match without any risk yeah it was interesting i, I was i was also thinking about before this game what you will what what a kind of opening uh, you would see i was i was expecting d4 but uh i think i thought oh, maybe he will now get his uh this uh, his main weapons. Let's say this usual openings out like the Slav or yeah. Queen's Gambit to climb to to hunker down to to get a draw. Yeah. But uh, I think it's 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 a very positive thing that he um, still played this uh, rather dynamic opening, and it's you also need to see it the other way if you now get into some some fight, mm. and uh, he would let's say it would be an open an open board fight and he would win with black then the match is simply over. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So. It's 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 just the same. If you if you if you look at football, one one team has scored a goal. You, <laughs> I, you, I wasn't should... going to mention football uh, to you. I'm not. <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry. I'm just, sorry about just... Chelsea. Yeah, I'm sure you're a better team. <laughs> it's not. It's no 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 problem. But it's just it's just it's just the thing. It's it's like, just like at football. If you one goal up and you've got some time to play, it's not like we're in the 85th minutes or something. But you've got some time to play. Should you try to make the second goal to really to make it uh, to make it clear, or should you try to play defensively and uh, not not get a goal? Um, very often, it's better to to keep on keep on playing your game and playing to your strength. And he seems to have decided before that with Black, um, he wanted to play, um, yeah, what? dynamic uh, I, I, dynamically. I, I suppose yeah. the Rapids, if they had drawn all the games, the Rapids would be a bit like penalties in football. It would just be a lottery, <laughs> wouldn't it? But Anand with much greater track record behind him for, for, for rapid chess or, you know, faster chess. It yeah, be, he's got a very, very nice, uh, also very nice score against uh, Gelfand and Rapids. But... Uh, what what you always need to need to take into account that Gelfand really is a, or seems to be a player that really rises to the occasion. Yeah. yeah. He, if it counts, he gives his absolute best. And there have been so many, uh, um, yeah, opinions uh, raised before the match that it would be very one-sided, and he's not, I don't know, a worthy uh, challenger or whatever. This is uh, complete nonsense. You need to see. That he well, what what did he do to to get to this match? He, he needed to to win the World Cup, which is 128 players, and basically everyone played there. He yeah. played Kayakin in the final. He played lots of 2,700 players on the way to this final, and he beat them all. And then he got to this uh, candidates uh, tournament, and he beat all those guys as well. Yeah. So. What uh, <laughs> what more can you do? I think if in terms of what um, if you just look at what what did had a player um, what what, he, what did the player need to do to get a match? This is uh, for years the most worthy challenger of all 
just compare this with uh, the match two years ago. What did Topalov do to get this World Championship match against uh, against Varnand? If you go all the way back from 2010 back, then he will got this match because okay, he beat Kamsky in this match to qualify mm. for this. But this match with Kamsky only got because he lost to Kramnik in 2006, and in this 2006 match he only got because of San Luis 2005. So you can construct it all the way back this 2010 match mm. to won some tournament five years ago, and then he won one match against Kamsky, where Kamsky even was a better player and was just unlucky. Mm. So it's it's complete nonsense to tell that um, this would be um, somewhat I don't know an unworthy challenger or anything. Of course, um, we all, and I include myself, I would have loved to see Aronian winning the, the candidates and we see this match, yeah? yeah. But uh, he, will, he, he gives his best and of course the first six match, uh, six match games here were pretty dull, but uh, okay, we had two exciting games, interesting games now, mm. and now only four games to go. Yeah. Maybe we can look forward to more decisive games. Yeah, it would be very funny to start with six draws and then have six decisive games. Yeah, M maybe <laughs> girlfriend has been practicing blitz on, <laughs> and he knows it might end up in blitz. Maybe maybe they both have. Sorry, rapid. Is it? It's going to be rapid. Thirty minute chess with increment or something. Yeah, uh, the, yeah, but but at the end, if they if they draw all this. Um, it's it's an Armageddon Blitz game at the end of all. All right, yeah. So the faster time controls really are an important part of modern chess to get. Um, that they are, aren't they? And it's not just for fun anymore. Blitz or rapid. Yeah. Sure, sure. It's uh, it's very very important, and uh, it's it's often uh, for for very very high stakes and uh, and uh, practicing this and also have a good. Uh, I have having good nerves is very important. I'm not sure. Uh, uh, did you yesterday? Um, did you see? This is completely off topic now. But did you see uh, the the play of uh, rapid match um, for the U.S. Uh, wom women's title between Anna Zatonsky and uh, Irina Crush? No. For instance? Yeah, this was very very entertaining to to watch. But I guess for the players it was terrible. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Um, Crush won the first game with Black, and they had a two, 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 two games. Yeah, and she won the first game with Black, mm. and um, just needed to draw in the second game with White. And Zatonsky played very aggressive opening and had a, had a completely winning position. Then Crush blundered the rook. Oh no! In in really in just he just she just needed to to give one in, intermediate check and take it, and it's the rook up. And Zatonsky stared for three minutes into this position and didn't take the rook. Mm. And uh, Crush was like, "Oh, you could really see it on the webcam that she was completely, <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. completely yeah." And then it it, it continued, and Zatonsky uh, was winning anyway. She didn't take the rook, but she was winning anyway. And at the end, she was I don't know so hyped up from on on nerves that she blundered the rook herself. Oh no! So it, really, and it was for I don't I'm not sure, but uh, it was for thousands of dollars. Oh dear! It's it's really a huge uh, prize fund in. Um, in those um, in this, those U.S. championships, so rapid uh, and having really um, yeah the kind of uh, nerves for this is uh, is very very important nowadays. So so arena is but arena crush is the women's champion now, yeah. I'll yeah, yeah she, she won this. She won <laughs> well, it's, this, a, it's uh, a good name, crush, isn't it? King's crusher, <laughs> crush. It's, it's, it's fun, right? <laughs> All right. Yeah, we've gone very much up. <laughs> okay. Um, I hope anyone, everyone on YouTube, still awake uh, and still interested, enjoyed this commentary. Uh, it was, was a brief game. Sorry about the detour. Um, we'll try and do the previous game another time. Um, uh, okay. Uh, thanks, Chris. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Okay. S see you in the next game. Yeah, I hope so. I hope we had uh, better audio this time, but I'm pretty optimistic. Yeah. It uh, worked out well, I think. Yeah. Okay. Cheers then. Cheers.